What's going on guys, Lomax here, and welcome back to another Battleborn character guide. This one will be featuring Wrath. Wrath, the generate attacker, is an all-in assassin who can self-sustain in combat. He's a more beginner-friendly character that relies on his abilities to stick to his targets, and then finishes them off with his melee attacks and ultimate. Now let's go ahead and get into his abilities. His passive genetic siphon is going to provide him with a small amount of lifesteal for his melee attacks and his abilities. If you're not familiar with lifesteal, this basically means that Wrath is going to heal for a small percentage of the damage he does. This will provide a little bit of sustain if you do not have a healer on your team or any health regen. His weapons are his blades. His primary attack will allow him to execute a 4 strike melee combo with an AoE spin at the end and his secondary attack will allow him to perform a short-ranged melee strike in front of him at a much slower speed. His first skill, Crossblade, is going to allow Wrath to throw an X-shaped energy blade forward, dealing damage when it hits an enemy. This is your main source of poke and deals pretty good damage, which is great because it's the only significant damage you can pull off from range. It will be useful if you have a tough time getting close to your enemies. His second skill, Catalytic Smash, is going to allow Wrath to send out a shockwave in front of himself, dealing damage and knocking up any enemy's hit. This is your main initiation tool as once your enemies are knocked up, you will have a chance to do free damage. Dreadwind, his ultimate, will cause Wrath to attack in a whirlwind pattern after a brief wind-up period. This attack lasts 4 seconds and Wrath will do damage to any enemies in range of this attack. Ideally, this would follow up Catalytic Smash, after you knock your enemies into the air. Starting at level 1 with his Helix Tree, we're going to have a choice between Slowing Strike, which buffs Crossblade, and Waveform Smash, which buffs Catalytic Smash. Slowing Strike is going to add a slowing effect to Crossblade, lasting 3 seconds. This is a go-to in PvP, as this slow will help you stay on an enemy, preventing them from escaping. This is also good for setting up your knock-up and combo with your ultimate past level 5. In PvE, it's less necessary because you don't need to worry so much about slowing enemies. Waveform Smash is going to shorten Catalytic Smash's range, but will cause it to extend to the left and right. This skill is better in PvE as you will have a wider AoE Smash, allowing you to knock up more enemies. This isn't necessarily bad in PvP, but the hindered range will make it harder to get the knock up on enemies from a distance, Plus, you would have to forego the slow on Crossblade. At level 2, we're going to get two buffs to Crossblade. Shield Siphon and Anger's Echo. Shield Siphon is going to steal an enemy's shield on impact, giving Wrath shield capacity equal to whatever the damage Crossblade does. I found this skill to be pretty lackluster. It would have its greatest use in PvP, where enemy Battleborn tend to have shields, but even then it isn't that impressive. And it's nearly useless in PvE, where most things do not have shields to begin with. Now, Anger's Echo is my choice at this level. It's going to spawn a new Crossblade when the first one is destroyed. That moves towards Wrath, and will deal half damage to anything it hits. It acts like a boomerang, except it travels back in the same path and went out. This is going to amplify Crossblade's damage, and Wrath's poke as well. At level 3, we'll have a choice between Terror from Above, which will buff Wrath's armor, and Spin to Win, which will buff Wrath's melee attack. Terror from Above is going to give Wrath a double jump. This will increase your mobility as now you can scale certain terrain. Other than that, it's just a double jump. Nothing too exciting. Spin to Win is going to add a second spin to the end of Wrath's primary attack melee combo. Now you will hit 5 times in your combo instead of 4, increasing your DPS. Unless you have a real need for the double jump here, I would take this skill. At level 4, we're going to get two buffs to Catalytic Smash. They are Crimson Fastness and Catalytic Flash. With Crimson Fastness, Wrath will now leap forward before smashing the ground. This could help you close the gap a little bit and bring you closer to your target. Now, I believe the leap only happens if you're moving forward. Otherwise, you just do an extra spin in place if you aren't moving fast before you smash the ground. Catalytic Flash is going to allow Catalytic Smash to silence enemies on impact, which is super nice to have in PvP. This will prevent most enemies from being able to escape, 
and will also prevent them from being able to do any significant damage back to you. Definitely take this in PvP. In PvE, a silence isn't going to do anything, so I'd recommend the first skill. But if you really don't like the leap forward, this skill won't have any negative effects. At level 5, we're going to get two buffs to Genetic Siphon. Skillful Siphoning, and Not a Vampire. Skillful Siphoning is going to grant additional lifesteal whenever a skill damages an enemy, while Not a Vampire is going to grant additional lifesteal when Wrath deals damage with melee strikes. Skillful Siphoning can give you a good deal of healing, especially when you use your ultimate, but once all your skills are on cooldown, it becomes much harder to heal. I prefer taking Not a Vampire because it will give you more sustained healing, whereas healing with your skills will be done in bursts. At level 6, we'll have a choice between Brutal Blades, which buffs Crossblade, and Catastrophic Smash, which buffs Catalytic Smash. Brutal Blades is going to increase the damage of Crossblade. This will give you a little more poke damage, plus this will be good with Anger's Echo, the skill that spawns the second Crossblade. Definitely worth taking in both PvE and PvP. Catastrophic Smash is going to increase the range of Catalytic Smash. This isn't a bad choice in PvP, as you can hit your target from a farther distance now, but again, the closer you can get the better. It won't do you any good to hit them and have the knock-up duration end by the time you get to your target. It can set up for your teammates to do something though if they're nearby. At level 7, we're going to have a choice between Evasive Maneuvers, which will buff Wrath's armor, and To the Point, which will buff Wrath's melee attack. Evasive Maneuvers is going to give Wrath increased movement speed for a brief period after losing his shield. This will help you stick to targets as if they destroy your shield, you will move faster, and they will have a tough time escaping unless they use some sort of CC on you. Again, using the silence you can get at level 4 will help with this, making it near impossible for enemies to do anything but fight you face to face. It's also good for escaping because you don't really have any dashes, so... If you made a mistake going in when you shouldn't have, the movement speed increase can help you get out. To the point is going to increase the damage of Wrath's melee strikes by nearly a fifth. This is a pretty significant increase which is going to make you very strong, especially if you take the extra bonus to lifesteal on your melee attacks. I prefer this skill at this level because it's a damage increase, and you have enough tools in your kit to get close to your enemies already with the crossblade slow and knock up from catalytic smash. At level 8, we're going to get two buffs to Crossblade, Energetic Projection and Quick Cross. Energetic Projection is going to increase the range of Crossblade. Provided you take the slow, you can now slow enemies from a farther distance and it gives you safer poke as well. This shouldn't make too much of a difference in PvE, so I would pass on it there. Quick Cross is going to decrease the cooldown of Crossblade. This skill is nice to have in PvE and PvP, as you will be able to do more damage with Crossblade as a result of being able to use it more. At level 9, we're going to get two buffs to Catalytic Smash, Soften Target, and Zealous Smash. Soften Target is going to make any enemy hit by Catalytic Smash take increased damage from Crossblade for a few seconds. This skill in theory should change the way that you use Crossblade. Instead of poking and slowing an enemy first, now you want to use your Catalytic Smash first and follow it up with a Crossblade to maximize your damage. With your enemies knocked up, it should be much easier to hit them with a Crossblade. Zealous Smash is going to decrease Dreadwind's cooldown by a few seconds for every kill with Catalytic Smash. This skill isn't going to be that good in PvP unless you can continually kill minions with Catalytic Smash. You don't really want to waste it on them though because you never know when you're going to need to use it. In PvE, it has more use because you won't have to worry about fighting enemy players. At level 10, we're going to get our final two buffs, which will go to Dreadwind, Wrath's ultimate. They are Dreadheart and Desperate Assault. Dreadheart is going to increase Wrath's movement speed while Dreadwind is active. This skill can, again, help you stick to targets more easily, but that shouldn't be hard at this point. Plus, it has range, so it's not like you have to be in something's face to hit them. It can help you cover more ground, however, so if you need some fast wave clear in different spots, this should help out with that. Desperate Assault is going to increase Dreadwind's damage when Wrath's shields are down. This is a much better option in my opinion, as this is a huge damage increase. It's situational as your shields have to be down, but let's be real, they're probably going to be down. You should be able to put out some pretty decent AoE damage with this skill. 
And I'd take it in both PvE and PvP. That's going to do it for Wrath, guys. He has a lot of tools in his kit that will help you stick to your enemies and enough damage to finish them off. As always, feel free to rate and or comment down below if you have anything you wish to share. Feel free to subscribe if you're interested in seeing future videos. And I'll catch you guys next time.